Well hello to you all again. Today I'm going to show you um, the latest improvement that I'm making to my machine. What I've got here is a, an old terminal box onto which I've mounted a rather expensive uh, temperature gauge. It's a, a temperature reading meter. It's got a microprocessor inside. It's rather expensive but it's something that's left over from a job so it owes me nothing. And underneath here I've mounted my current meter. It's milliamps and my laser tube is specified to run up to a maximum of 20 milliamps. You know, I want to make sure that this time I don't destroy my tube by doing anything silly to it, which is why I've been a bit cautious about doing anything with my machine until I've got this fitted. So this is going to allow me to do some work on another project in the near future where I'm going to test whether or not the water in the water jacket has a significant effect on the, um, on the power output power of the machine. So as the temperature goes up, whether the power of the machine goes down, and if it does, by how much. I'm basically trying to understand what this machine does before I start putting it into real practice. And I suspect that probably this information will read across to a lot of your machines as well. So this is information that's not easily available out there on the, uh, on the old web at the moment. Now, although the tube itself, the laser tube itself is very high voltage on one end, on the other end, it's virtually zero volts and the amount of current flowing it through it is only 20 milliamps so you know ordinary mains cable here is going to be perfectly okay for carrying the current and there's no significant voltage to worry about because the voltage has already disappeared across the tube so we're going to connect this into the negative end or the output end of the laser so we're able to use a very cheap um, low voltage ammeter I think this probably cost me about two pound from China delivered. I've already drilled holes in the side of the machine here to match up with the holes in the side of my box and I decided to mount it on the back corner here because it's very close to my water which is just down here and it's also very close to the connection that I want to make which is literally just here where my finger is. So we'll have a look in there in a minute but first of all let's fix this box up to Please excuse the dogs in my next door neighbour's garden. They're having a bit of a uh, bit of a party. Well, there we are. That's fairly secure on there, and it'll get better when I put the box when I put the back on there. And you can see where my cable has come through. So I've already gone into the the cable that comes into the end of the tube here and cut it. And then I've fitted a male and female bullet connector onto it. So if I really have to. I can connect it back together like that. Let's cut this piece of cable off somewhere about here. Oh, sorry, I've got a male that goes into there and a female that goes into there. But I've got two cables here and I've got to see which one is which. I've used the brown onto the plus of the meter, I think, because it's not marked. And I've used the blue onto the negative of the meter, which I think it is marked. There's just a bar on it, so I'm presuming that's the minus. So hopefully we get this polarity the right way round to start with and the meter goes plus when I test it. Um, I'm only going to apply a short pulse to it so that if it does go minus I can swap the connections over. Right now you're watching this live so hmm, let's see what happens. We turn the laser off to start with and we turn the machine power on. And we should find that nothing is happening and as we would expect nothing happens because we're not driving the laser but what I will do is now just force a pulse through the laser and it's going the wrong way so I got my connections wrong right well here we are at the back of the machine now I've just turned the machine off and if I was working at the other end of the machine there, at the positive end of the machine, I would be very, very cautious and leave the machine for probably an hour or so to try and let any capacitors that might be in there discharge. But because I'm working at this end of the machine and I've got insulated terminals, first of all, I don't think there's very much voltage here at all. But what I'm going to do is disconnect this one and then this one, being very careful that I don't touch any live any any terminations there we go now what I'm going to do is change the term terminals on here I'm going to swap these over the the polarity of these over and obviously 
this is just connected to the meter and it's dead. So I have no problem fiddling around with this now. So we just cut these off and we'll just remake these ends. And we'll go back for round two. And now we'll just try pulse. Bingo. It works. So I've got a little program in there at the moment which is going to cut a square <clears throat> but it's running at 60% which according to my calculations um, according to the graphs that I produced should be roughly maximum output at about 20 milliamps but let's just see what we've got. And we'll press enter and go. So 60% looks to be around about 15 milliamps. We'll run the same test again. And this time it's running at 70%. And now we've got about 17 and a half milliamps. I've now set my percentage to 80%. So let's just see what we get this time. And I don't want to run over 20 milliamps, so if I have to, I should press the pause button. See, I'm now running over. I've just gone from 70 to 80%. And I've now overdriven the tube. Right, we'll now run it again at 75%. And we are spot on 20 milliamps. I'm running this program on 4 millimeter plywood, and I have been running it at about 8 millimeters per second. We'll now try the program at 12 millimeters per second. Now, bearing in mind I'm cutting wood, and you would normally expect wood to produce a lot of smoke. I just want you to be sure that you can take a look in the background here and see, just bear in mind I've got my, my door completely open and you'll see how efficient the extraction system is. And the good news is the smoke's coming out from underneath, which means I am cutting. I'm cutting right the way through, he said, but it didn't drop out. It has actually cut through, it just requires the slightest amount of pressure on the corners looks as though it's just the corners that are holding it in. Right now to complete my instrument panel up there what I've now got to do is to get the uh, get the temperature probes working. Now to measure temperature what I've got are these measuring probes. Now these are plastic covered so they're completely waterproof and these are something called NTC resistors, negative temperature coefficient resistors. And they're pretty accurate. They're accurate to probably within about 0.1 or 0.2 of a degree C. They're pre-calibrated. And I have two of these. So here I've got a special connector that goes into the back of that uh, instrument. So there they are, connected into its little terminal block. We've got another little terminal block which plugs in the back, which is the mains power. And we'll turn the power on. There we go. But basically 15.3 is the temperature of one of these probes at the moment, which is probe number one. You'll see it's starting to go up, 19, 20. So this is the probe that's being displayed at the moment. We need this one on the return line from the tube. And this other one, we'll drop that into this end here <clears throat> so that we get an idea of what the general water temperature is around the inlet to the pump. Now this other one's going to be slightly more difficult to work with because I want it to measure the temperature as the water returns from the uh, cooling jacket. Right, now what I've done here on this return pipe, hopefully you can see, I've bent the probe so that it sits in the flow of water as it shoots out of this pipe. Now I've got to keep this pipe underneath the water so I'm hopeful that it will give me a good indication of what the return temperature is rather than the temperature of the surrounding bath. But we'll have to just experiment with that a bit and see. So the 14.1 there is 
probe number one, which is the return from the water jacket. So 75% now has gone up to about 22 or 23 milliamps. I'm overdriving the tube now, so I should really be back to 70%, I think. And off we go again. We're still just over 20 milliamps, even at 70%. So maybe my graphs were telling me the right information, 65% maximum. And here we go again. That's it, we're on 20 milliamps, that's 65%. So that's my real maximum limit, 65%. Well, at 65% just here, as you can see, it still has just about cut through. It's for some reason or other it's hanging up, but I think they're probably just the corners that are hanging up. But it has cut through. But it hasn't cut through with excess power. And how do I know that? When I look at my table there, I can see that there is no marking on the table. So I've used all the power to do the cutting and none of it has spilled through and gone down to mark the table. And I could demonstrate what I mean by dropping the speed down to something like maybe 8 again. Now if I get that right, just about here, you should see a burn mark going across here on the table. And I should have excess power there now. Now if we look at the table, you see the burn mark on the table being generated? So that's one of the great advantages of an acrylic base plate. Because now I can see clearly that I've got too much power to cut that square. I can run the speed faster, so I'm using the table almost like a power meter. Okay, I'm now going to just do a quick test to complete this session, uh, to check my instrumentation and see roughly what's going what on. What I'm going to do is to drop the table down so that it's well and truly out of focus, but of course the machine doesn't care. A quick look at the side here tells us that we've got 14.9 degrees C on the return water from the laser tube. What we're now going to do is to keep an eye on that as we run our test here. And I'm probably going to run the test for about 10 minutes. So let me just check my watch. Okay. I'm afraid there's nothing riveting going on. All it's going to do is go up and down and up and down. So we're starting off at 14.9 and every minute I'll just keep an eye on the temperature. And after 10 minutes worth of running, we're still sitting solidly on 20 milliamps. So everything is nice and stable. Well, I think we'll stop the test now. We've, um, we've done what we planned to do, which is fit the instrumentation. We've given it a quick road test. Now we've got to go away and think of some uh, significant tests to carry out, but I'm very happy with the performance of the machine now that I know that I've got it under control.